Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel, and today I'd like to show you how to quickly figure out box fill per the 2020 NEC. I made a video previously called Box Fill Calculations with new 2020 NEC changes in grounding fill, Article 314.16b5. In that video, I went over every code needed to figure out box fill, but some viewers commented that the procedure takes too long, and that is definitely true if you have to stop and carefully read every code. So in this video, I'll just reference my earlier video for the codes. We'll concentrate on getting the job done quickly, or in, quote, cheat mode, unquote, as one of my viewers called it. We won't actually be cheating, but I like the name. The first thing to do is to quickly find the cubic inches of the box. You may recognize this box as a Carlin B432, which tells you right away by the last two digits that the box has 32 cubic inches interior space. Or you can just look at the nail holding flap, which says on it 32 cubic inches. Then the mud ring that goes on this box to hold two devices clearly says on the outside lower area 6.1 cubic inches. So we very quickly determined that we have 38.1 cubic inches of space to work with. Now we'll quickly count the conductors and we find that we have a total of 10 hot and neutral conductors. We can look at the color of the sheathing on the cable and see that it's yellow. This tells you very quickly that the cables are 12 gauge. Now you can glance at this volume allowance per conductor table and you can see that since we're working with 12 gauge, our volume allowance is 2.25. Memorizing some of this table will really speed up this procedure but the important thing for this particular box is that you know it's 2.25 for 12 gauge. We have four types of volume allowances in this box. Conductors, devices, internal clamps, and ground wires. All will use the volume allowance of the largest conductor in the box, which is 12 gauge. So we have 10 volume allowances for the conductors. The devices have two volume allowances each, and since we will have one switch and one receptacle, that will be four volume allowances for the two devices. Internal clamps have one volume allowance for all of the internal clamps. We have five ground wires coming into the box from outside of the box. Four of these ground wires count as one volume allowance. The fifth ground wire counts as a quarter of a volume allowance. So for volume allowances, we have 10 volume allowances for conductors, four for devices, one for internal clamps, and one and a quarter for grounds. That equals 16 and a quarter volume allowances, which you multiply by 2.25 you get out your calculator, and that equals 36.56 cubic inches. Then you compare that to the 38.1 cubic inches of volume for the box plus the mud ring, and we find that this box fill passes. So basically, just get the cubic inches of the box, count conductors, count devices that are going into the box, Add one volume for internal clamps if you have them. Count ground wires and do your multiplication. It does take some practice, but it's quick. Or like we like to say, it's cheat mode. I'll put links in my video description for the spiral bound NEC codebook and the NEC handbook. I'll also put a link for the video that I made that shows all the pertinent NEC code articles about box fill. And I will put in my video description as well a link to my playlist 
for EMT bending. I have 24 videos on EMT bending, and I'll put a link for my playlist for NEC code videos, which there's a lot of those. I don't know how many, but there's a lot of them. So thank you very much, and I hope this video was helpful. Mm -hmm.